This video is going to take you through the entire tips workbook. You can go back and look at sections. I'll also link the sections in the workbook so that you can easily click the link to get help for exactly what you need. So this is your tips forms workbook. All of your tips forms for every meeting, every data analyst form will be stored in here. So um, if you look down here at the tabs at the bottom, you'll see there's directions for use of forms in this workbook. We're going to be spending most of the time here. Color coded in red is your master's, your master for tiers one through three. Yes, you're going to be doing tier three, but I made it as simple as possible until we're ready to make it more complicated. So this is your um, master form. You will duplicate this one for your first meeting, and then you'll continue to duplicate each meeting um, tips form and just change this um, name in here. This is your data analyst form for tier one. It is color coded in the same green as tier one is color coded. And data analyst form two is color coded yellow, which is the same color as the form, I mean, as uh, tier two. So everything is color coded to make things as easy as possible. All right, let's go back to the directions. You have a table of contents here. So tips forms at the top, but if you want to just find out about, say, data analyst form one, you click here, click down here. It takes you to the directions for data analyst form one. Okay, underneath it is data analyst form two. Um, but if you want to go back to the beginning, actually, you don't have to double click. You just click on there, hover and then click. The um, data analyst form one and two will both take you back to the table of contents. So you can easily go back up to the top. Okay, all of this here um, are just general directions for the tips forms. I've color coded the directions to match the color on the agenda and the um, tier one, two, and three. So this is for the beginning of your agenda. Um, these directions here match the agenda items here. And then items four through seven on your agenda, that's tier one indicated here by T1. And um, you have the um, directions over here. Now you'll also notice too that I noted what TFI items these cover. So use of this form in its entirety fulfills TFI items 1.2, 2.2, and 3.2. As you go down, you'll see these callouts. It'll say TFI, like this one, TFI 1.1, 1 .1, 2.1, and 3.1. If you are um, keeping track of your attendance and their um, attendance is 80% or better, then that fulfills those TFI items. Okay. So this is tier one from the agenda. These are the parts of tier one, and these are the directions for tier one. Now, when I'm talking about items, that's actual items from the agenda items. So agenda items four, five, six, and seven, items four through seven, general directions, then item four, item five, item six, and item seven. Here you'll see that TFI 1.13, if you're using new problems and previously defined problems, that covers that TFI item. So that's for this whole part. Okay, now we're in tier two, indicated here by T2. It is also yellow. It's items eight through 12, and this number is wrong. Let me fix it really quick. It'll be right on yours, because I'm just copying these. Um, items eight through 12 um, are on here. Yeah, there it is. So on this space, you can see that it goes to um, item 12. There's also a best practice um, item in here. And then we're down to um, tier three, which is item 13 on the agenda. There's information here. Super simple for tier three. I made it as simple as I could. Okay, and then down here is where you're ending your meeting. You have agenda items for next meeting. 
um, evaluation of the meeting, when is the next meeting, and all the directions are down here below it. For your data analyst form tier one, I color coded it. Um, you have the red flag item. You're going to, and this matches what's in the form. So the form looks like this. So you're going to start with your red flag item, and I'll talk about in a little bit what that is. But it's highlighted in red because it's your red flag item. I moved the referral summary up so that it's the next thing that you do because it's going to determine whether you continue this form or not. And then, um, but I'll go over that in a little bit. So going back to the directions, um, here's the directions for the red flag item. This is the referral summary. Here's directions for this. And then um, you have more directions down here. Um, and this is, if you end up doing, if you end up doing a tier one new problem, this gives you everything you need, including the section from the, the um, main form. Okay, then you have data analyst form two. This is on how to do a SECO Swiss drill down. It shows you sample charts and graphs um, to help you understand what you're looking for and what you're looking at. There's directions over here. These are sample, this is sample data, it's not real data. And then um, in the data analyst form, I changed how it looks a little bit. So student first name, you can use first and last name, but they use first name, last initial. Are they a new referral? Yes. If they are, there's directions. If they are not, there's directions here. Then you're going to continue with this information. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the remaining part of the video. So back to our directions, it gives you screenshots, what to look for in SQL Swiss, directions, parts of the main form that you'll be using, and so on. Okay, so that is what we are going to be doing today. And instead of scrolling up, I could have clicked to go back to the top. Okay. Okay, that didn't go so well. Try it again. There we go. Okay, so as I said before, use of this form in its entirety fulfills TFI items 1.2, 2.2, and 3.2. Um, you're going to watch for other items uh, covered in the TFI throughout the directions as we go. When you um, are forming, or excuse me, when you're sharing your forms, um, make sure you give edit access to the coach the counselor, the data analyst, and the minutes taker. Everyone else should have viewer access, and it's not a an issue except you just don't want somebody accidentally messing up your form. So it's easier if you just give them viewer access. Administrators can have edit access if they want, but um, again, you're just protecting your information from accidental um, deletion or whatever. There is a way to fix it. I'm not gonna get into that though. Um, it's through the history, but anyway, so you can give your administrator edit access. It's not a big deal. Um, there's no reason, I put a note here, there's no reason to restrict access except to keep the form from getting changed accidentally. You can use undo. There's all kinds of things you can do. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about the tips forms. The tips form is designed to help you get through a lot of data and decisions in about one hour. You should be able to just run through the form from top to bottom and get through everything you need. The key is to have information updated before the meeting begins so that your time is taken up with decision making, not typing and adding data. And how about if I remove this extra I that's here? Okay. So directions for the tips form. The directions are color coded based upon the color coding in the form itself. For your first meeting of the year on the master, you're going to type the team member names with their positions indicated. Note, there's a new position. TK is the timekeeper to keep the group on track to finish in one hour. Um, you're going to, on the master, develop the team norms. Type them either in the blue box on the agenda or on the right side of your tips form. You're going to duplicate the master and rename it with the date of your first meeting. Continue your meeting on the new sheet you just created. For the rest of your meetings, duplicate the previous month's meeting 
and just move data around as necessary. Okay, so let's do that. So on the master, I'm going to type in the team member names with their position. So your school name will already be up here. So we're going to have, oops, Mary Jones. She is the coach. We have um, Sam Smith, who is the data analyst. Kathy Johnson is our minutes taker. And Joe uh, Schmedlop. He is our timekeeper. And then we are going to have team members after that. So we're going to have Sally Forth. She used to be a cartoon I used to follow. A comic, not a cartoon. Uh, let's see. Let's do some names so I don't have to keep thinking of things. Fred Flintstone. He is a team member. And I'll pick one more just for good measure. Um, Betty Rebel. Oops. Team member. Okay. So, according to my directions... Um, we're going to develop our team norms. So there's two places you can do your team norms. You can do them over here if you want. You'll just want to merge some cells to type in like this. Click merge. Set it to start at the top. And for the text to wrap. And you can type norms in here. Oops, control enter is what lets you do a carriage return. And so you would do like one, respectful. We're just going to make these up. Yours may look very different. Uh, two, responsible. They should look very different because this is just behavior expectations. Safe. Okay, the other place you can do it, and you don't need to do it in both, but the other place you can do it is here. If you do control enter, you can space over a little bit and do one respectful control enter space over responsible control enter safe. Okay, and then there's my team norms right there. So they can either be here or they can be here. It's up to you. Okay, so now the directions tell me to duplicate the master and rename it with the date of your first meeting. So now I'm going to go over here to the little triangle. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to rename it, the one that says copy. Oops, right click, you can rename or you can double click really fast either way. So let's pretend that this is our August meeting. So we can just call it August. And this is the one we're working from. So I'm going to take attendance. Today's meeting date, we'll just make up one. August 14th. Oops. Okay, I've got to fix that formatting. Um, I'm not going to worry about too much about it here, but anyway, there we go. Okay, and we started our meeting at 3 o'clock. We're going to end at 4 o'clock. And the location is, let's say, the library. Okay, so that's done. All right, let's go back to our directions. Okay, so here I did the attendance. I completed today's meeting. So now we're going to look at it, these agenda items. Now notice, so I left the um, Excel format in there for those of you that really like to use that. And it is a CKH thing, which is a district initiative. So I'm keeping in step with that. 
So engage should take less than five minutes. You go over your team norms, approve the previous meeting's minutes. Now, they should have been sent out ahead of the meeting unless you shared as viewer only. All you have to do is share the link in an email. So if you just go up here to share and you're going to copy the link and then you're going to put that in an email. Excuse me, directly following your meeting when you're when your form is completely done, you just send out a link to the teachers and say, please remember to go over um, the minutes from today to make sure everything's accurate. Some people will do it, some people won't, but all you have to do is remind them. Okay, Explore, we're gonna review today's agenda. So on my master, I'm just gonna, we've already done the team norms, we've approved the meetings minutes, and we're here on number three. So you just tell them we're gonna be doing, um, Tier 1, Quarter 1 TFI Goal Review, Systems Updates and Other General Information. We're going to do new problems, previously defined problems, and then we're going to be doing Tier 2, Quarter 1 TFI Goal Review, School-Wide Summary, um, New Referrals, Progress Monitoring and Action Planning, Fading and Graduation or Program Exit, and then for Tier 3, Student Progress Monitoring, then we're going to do an evaluation of the meeting and a closing. So now everybody knows exactly what we're doing. And so um, we don't get as off track. All right, let's go back to our directions. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now we're on tier one. This is gonna be about 45 minutes, this whole communicate and empower thing. So if you think about it, there's three things in here. So you wanna do about 15 minutes each. The yellow part may take a little longer. So over here on items four through seven, uh, items four through seven on the agenda are green because this is where you go in your meeting. You can scroll over and see the whole thing. This is the beginning and should go quickly. Allow about 15 minutes for these items. So item four, review the SMART goal and solution actions. Indicate where you are in implementation of the actions. Indicate the effectiveness of the solution. Choose the next steps. This will be done at each meeting until October 11th. So this is the goal that you guys chose at your um, meeting at the end of last year for quarter one to improve your TFI score. So on this form, oops, wait a minute, I need to be in August. Um, on this form, you know what, I'm going to slide this over so I don't mess up. Ah, you can easily slide these tabs. No, you can't. <laughs> Let me move this one. It's bigger. There we go. That way they're next to each other. And you can put these in any order you want. You just slide it over. Anyway, so your TFI item will be typed here. Your SMART goal that you were supposed to write at the end of last year is here. And your solution actions that you chose are already here. So we're not doing any part of this at our meetings. We're just reading through it and then we're saying, okay, so our solution action to, um, let's see, what would one of them be? Um, to um, remind teachers about um, behavior specific praise. Well, this is the first meeting of the month. So maybe we haven't started it yet. Um, and then if we haven't started it, we need to say why in the comments box. And my comments box disappeared. I need to make a comments box. Um, it's Or maybe it's partially implemented. Maybe you just mentioned behavior specific praise. Or it's fully implemented. You did a training on it, on your back to school meeting, and everybody knows about behavior specific praise. Okay. Or maybe it was stopped. Um, indicate the new intervention in the comments box. Maybe you decided that wasn't the problem and so, or wasn't a good solution action, so you just stopped it. That's not going to happen very much, but it's there if you need it. Okay, so we, we have partially implemented. How effective is that? Is it worse? No change, not a goal or goal met. And then the next steps for all these solution actions. Are we going to write a new goal? We'll have to document it. Uh, let me change that to the comments. Continue this goal, adjust the goal, discontinue the goal, or the goal is met and you need to document it. You won't be documented below. I'm going to put the comments box over here. 
Okay, so I added the comments box. It's on the master, and you will see it um, in your own workbook. Okay, so the next item is your other slash systems updates and general information. This would be things about your store, tickets or points, general housekeeping tasks. So when you are in your previous meeting, whatever ends up in this red section down here for the agenda items for next meeting, that will be placed in this space for the next meeting right here. So these are your agenda items from the previous meeting. So maybe people said we need a schedule for the store. So you're going to put stuff in here. You're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Basically what you should do is just be like, so we need to schedule the store for the year. Who wants to do that? So let's say um, Fred Flintstone decides he wants to do that. So you're just going to put in here um, store schedule. Fred will um, create a schedule um, to be approved at the next meeting, just to check for mistakes or whatever. Um, the schedule will be published um, for the staff immediately following, like that. Boom, done. That's all you have to talk about. You don't need to make a big deal out of it. Just put somebody in charge of it, document it, and move on. Okay, any notes about the systems updates and general information? Um, if you have any additional notes that don't fit in here, that's fine. So, or you can do the documentation down here. There's just space for you to do that if you need to. Okay, so let's talk about um, new problems. Um, let's see, oops, went to the wrong thing. All right, so let's look at item six. Any new systems problems that were discovered in the data analyst drill down will go here. Before the meeting, the data analyst should type the precise problem statement. Let me scroll over. Um, he or she needs to snip the graph to put it in the box on the far right. During the meeting, write a goal and come up with up to four solution actions, up to, you don't need four solution actions. You have one, two, three, or four to help you get to that goal. Team members need to volunteer to make sure the solution actions happen. Set a date for the solution actions to begin. Generally, you will report on effectiveness and integrity by the next team meeting. Any additional notes can be made in the section provided for it below the goal. Okay, so let's take a look at this part. So this section here is for new problems um, that are identified in the data analyst form over here. We're not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it when I do the data analyst form. But just know that the data analyst should type the precise problem statement here. And as a team, you're going to write a goal for it like what improvement you want to see. This is for systems issues only, where it's not just a few students, where it's like a whole grade level or all the boys or something like that. You're going to come up with up to four solution actions. And then for those solution actions, who's going to do it? Like, let's say one of them is teachers will be asked to teach the matrix before the students go to lunch. So who's going to make sure that the teachers are notified of that. Someone on the team needs to do it. It shouldn't just fall on the coach or the counselor. Maybe that, maybe it's the administrator that does it, or if the administrator is not there that day, um, who's going to tell the admin that this needs to happen before the next meeting. Okay. And then when is this, when are these solution actions going to start? So maybe you don't have your next staff meeting till a week from Tuesday. So you're going to say, okay, all this needs to be done by a week from Tuesday. Okay. Or, or next Tuesday. Okay. When are you going to re report on the integrity and effectiveness of these solution actions? Chances are you're going to do it at your next meeting. So you could just put, um, this is the August meeting. So you could just put September meeting. 
And then the drill down graph goes in here. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so that um, I made it easier than trying to stretch out lines and all that stuff. Okay, any additional notes about tier one new problems if needed? So maybe um, you have additional comments you want to make about, you know, maybe Fred Flintstone is going to let the principal know that the teachers need to be told this. So you would add those notes here. Okay. All right. Then previously defined problems for systems issues only. These are problems from the last meeting. So in August, you're not going to have one. But for your September meeting, you're going to copy this information here. No, just this part. You're going to copy it and you're going to paste it in here. You can retype it. You can do it however you want. But it's going to go down here because this is going to remain a previously defined problem until the problem is solved. For each of the solution actions, you're going to talk about, was it not started? Indicate why in the comments box. Again, I forgot a comment. Oh, well, it could be down here. This could be in additional notes. I'll change that. Indicate why in the additional notes. Was it partially implemented, fully implemented, or stopped? Indicate a new intervention in the additional notes box. Okay. Um, the effectiveness of the solution. So we um, implemented it, but it got worse. Okay. Or we partially implemented it and there's no change. Or we're working on it. We're not a goal yet. Or the goal has been met. Okay. What are the next steps? New goal document below. That would be in additional notes. Continue this goal. Adjust the goal. And you're going to document that here in additional notes. Discontinue the goal, put it in the additional notes, or the goal has been met. Once the goal has been met, you don't need to have it on your next meeting. Until the goal is met, it needs to show up on every previously defined problems. So you're going to end up with more than one previously defined problem. So let me show you the quick way to add additional previously defined problems. So let's say that this is now our October meeting and I need to copy all of this from my previous meeting. So in my new meeting, I'm going to highlight these lines. I'm going to insert new rows. Notice it says insert 11 rows below. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to re-highlight these rows actually I want to do it from here. Okay. And I'm going to copy. I'm going to put the row here. And there's another previously defined problem space for me. If I really feel the need to create a space in between, for me, it's an issue. It may not be an issue for you. I can insert one row above and I can just clear out this row. Actually, if I copy this, I can do the paint roller, highlight this, and now it's gone. Okay, so I have a second previously defined problem. The next month I may need another one, so I'm going to do the same steps again. And notice everything else slides down. Okay, so we'll come back to this when we do the data analyst form. Okay, so we have finished now tier one. And so now we're going to go on to tier two. That is yellow. And we'll go over that next. Okay, so looking at um, items eight through 12, um, these are yellow because this is where you're going to slow down in your meeting. <clears throat> this is the meat of the meeting and you should slow down and savor it allow about 20 minutes for these items. So for item eight, you're going to review the SMART goal and the solution actions, indicate where you are in implementation of the actions, indicate the effectiveness of the solution, choose the next steps. This will be done at each meeting until October 11th. So this is your goal for your TFI item for tier two that you chose to improve your TFI score. For um, item nine, before the meeting, the counselor needs to add up the students currently in SECO, Breaks or Better, and Small Group Counseling. 
That number is divided by your current enrollment. The percentage is recorded on the blank. At the first meeting, this number will be very low. For the remainder of the year, the percentage should be between 5 and 15% of your enrollment. Using the yellow data analyst form in this workbook, the counselor can drill down on the SECO data to get the information needed. When recording numbers in these spaces, they should include small group counseling students. We're going to go through all this in just a second. For item 10, which is right here, new referrals, new referrals refer to any student in the intervention for less than 10 days. Um, they may have already begun the intervention, but they're still new. For SECO and breaks are better, the counselor will list the names of the students. The name of the small group is recorded on this list. Students in the groups will be identified in the space below the list. The counselor will complete the first five columns. If the SIMS has already been completed, he or she can complete intervention type. The rest of the columns can be completed during the meeting. Add more rows by following the directions for best practice in the green box. Okay, the counselors should update the progress monitoring for small group counseling before the meeting. Students who are not making progress or have not attended enough sessions should be discussed briefly about how the students will be supported going forward. The student might need to attend an additional session of the same small group. They may also need SECO or breaks or better in addition. An SST can be called to discuss the student in more depth. So the counselors have that information. They have a tracking sheet and that will tell them how many sessions the students have attended. So um, it's just transferring data for the purpose of the PBIS team to monitor it. So for item 11, your progress monitoring right here, I left you a lot of spaces. This is for students who have been in SECO or breaks or better um, for more than 10 days, not small group counseling students. Okay. Um, the data analyst or the counselor can drill down on these students. The students who are not making progress should be discussed about how to help them succeed. The team could recommend that another SST meeting is conducted to look at the student more closely by the teacher, parent, and other staff to discuss additional supports for the student. Um, and then for item 12, this is where students who are ready for fading or graduation or program exit are listed for SECO or breaks or better only. Once a student is exited or graduates, they are dropped from the TIPS form. They stay on the TIPS form in this space until they exit or graduate. A best practice, to add more rows to any section, highlight the last row, go to insert rows, insert one row below. Keep doing that until you have enough new lines. With that last line still high highlighted, use control C. Click on the first box of all new lines. Use control V to paste. The new lines now have the same information as the line you copied. Expert hack. Highlight the number of lines you need to copy. When you go to insert rows, the system will automatically um, populate how many lines you need. So we'll go over all that in just a second. Okay, so the information in this next part of the form requires the data analyst form to be done, but we're going to go over that separately. This is just about filling out the form. So um, here you have your um, TFI item that you're going to be working on until October 11th and your SMART goal. I copied this from your previous um, tips forms. You should have written your SMART goal and your solution actions. From here on out, you're just going to be marking the implementation um, not started. Indicate why in the non-existent comments box, which I will um, give you in just a second. Um, partially implemented, implemented, or stopped. Indicate new intervention in the comments box. Okay, how effective was the solution? It got worse, there was no change to progressing, or the goal was met. For the next steps, new goal, document in the comments box. I'll change that in just a second. Okay, if you, um, this will be the comments box right here. So let me pause and fix that. Okay, so anything you need to put in the comments box will go here. All right, your school-wide summary, that will come from your data analyst form. That goes here. 
Um, the number of students with less than 10 days of data, those are new students, goes here. Students at or above 80% with more than 10 days of data goes here. These are raw numbers, not a percentage. Okay, and you can see that if you do those two parts, you're, you're fulfilling TFI 2.10 and TFI 2.11. Okay, let's talk about new referrals. So when the data analyst is doing the, um, the form, they are going to um, find, student, find um, new referrals. You may have new referrals from um, other places, but you also will have new referrals on that list. So the student name can go in here. So maybe Pebbles, Flintstone. Um, maybe you have an anger management group. Okay, so who's in your anger management group? You're going to list it here. Anger management. It's going to be Bam Bam. Um, Wiley Coyote. He has anger issues. Who else has anger issues? Oh, Bluto from Popeye. I only watch old cartoons, so if you don't know who these are, Google it. Anyway, so I'm going to put those here. So those are the ones in um, my anger management. So Pebbles is in first grade. My anger management kids in this group are maybe all second graders. Maybe they're second and third. I'll put that there. And then do they have um, an IEP? Oh, option two shouldn't be in there. Let me fix that really quick. Oh, I got rid of all these mistakes. Wait, let me put it in the master so that it gets copied. Okay, option two, IEP. Done. Apply all. Okay, so it's not changed on this form, but that's fine. So do they have none? IEP 504. There you go. Now the anger management group, you're not going to indicate that because it's a group of students. What was the referral date that they were referred for? Was it before today's meeting? Is it at today's meeting? Referral source, the PBIS team, teacher request, admin request, parent request, or student request. What's the intervention type? So if we've done the SIMS, we know um, which one it's going to be. Okay. And then Who's in charge of monitoring the implementation? Is it the counselor? Is it a particular teacher? When will the intervention begin? If it's already begun, you're going to put a date in the past. So let's say that we started it August 1. I know school's not in session August 1. But there you go. Thursday, August 1st. Preliminary SST done. Yes. Yay. No. Notify teacher to complete. So if there's no preliminary SST, um, you're going to... Um, you're going to make sure that that happens. Um, if you accidentally put something and you don't want anything there, if you just click on the choice again and back up and hit enter, it, well, it's supposed to go away. Hold on. Let's get rid of this. Okay, that didn't work. It's supposed to work. Why didn't it work? Click away. Oh, just click away from it. Don't hit enter. Okay. SST scheduled or completed. Okay. You may not know this information, so you may have to seek out the information and add it later, but the counselor should have access to this information. Um, completed, you document the date. Scheduled, document the date. None scheduled, schedule promptly. Here's where you mark the SST date. For the small group counseling, um, you won't be able to fill out this part of it. So just fill out what you can, um, the referral date and things like that you can fill out. All right. Now, um, progress monitoring. These are students who have been in CECOR breaks or better for more than 10 days. So let's say we have, um, Oh, yeah. Let's see. We'll put in 
just a couple of names. MGS, um, Sam B. Okay, so implementation status, um, not started, indicate why in the comments box, partially implemented, implemented, stopped, indicate no intervention in comments box. How many days have they been in the intervention? This is all in the drill down information. How many days above 80%? Okay, so have they gotten worse? Has there been no change? Are they progressing or is their goal met? You're going to choose one of those. The next steps. They're ready for fading, continue intervention, intensify supports, document the notes column, uh, edit, edit intervention, exit, sorry, not edit, exit intervention, document in the notes column. Okay, if they're ready for fading, then the next meeting, they're going to be moved down to the next list. They'll drop off of this list. Okay, SST data updated by the coordinator counselor, yes, indicate the date in the next box. Not yet, indicate when it will be in the next box, or no, indicate why in the comments box. So here's where the SST date will go. Um, and then, or not the SST date, the SST data being updated, like their progress um, being uploaded to the SST. And then notes or comments if needed. Okay, so this is for students who have been in more than 10 days. This is progress monitoring for small group counseling only. So students participating in small group counseling more than 10 days. So you're going to have the students' actual names in here. So we had Bam Bam and Wiley Coyote. Okay, they're in anger management. And you can just copy those for as many as you need. Um, control C, and then however many you have in that group, do that and it does it for all of them. Total days of session so far. So we've done this session for let's say 15 days, but this student has only attended 12 of them. Wiley Coyote has been there all 15 days. Okay. Um, how many referrals have they had? More than their baseline, no change from baseline, less than baseline, no new referrals. You'll mark that in here. Okay. The next steps. They're on track to graduate. Intensify supports, document in the notes column. Exit intervention, document in the notes column. Re-enroll in next session, document in the notes column. Um, SST data updated. Yes, not yet, no you have to document in the notes column. Uh, when was the SST data updated? Um, either you're putting in when it was updated or when it will be updated. Okay, fading graduation. These are students that are ready to um, fade and then graduate, or they've had a program exit. It's And this is for SECO or breaks are better only. So you're going to put their name in here, their intervention that they're in. Notice you only have two choices. And then are they going to fade and graduate? Or are they exiting the intervention? If they're exiting, you need to add it to the notes why they were exited and what's happening next. How will the intervention be faded? Breaks are better only. Reduce the number of breaks per time interval. You can only use that because it has to do with breaks. For breaks are better. For both of them, you can reduce the number of check-ins during the day or other document in the notes section if you come up with some other way of doing it. Just document it in the notes section. What's their expected graduation date? You think it'll take them like a week, two weeks? Who will manage the fading graduation or exit? When will the intervention begin fading or be exited? Um, was SST information updated? Um, and when was it updated? And if not, when will it be? And any notes go here. And these lines will expand as you type. So don't worry about the fact it's so small. All right, so that's the end of the tier two portion of the, um, of the meeting. 
you can see why it takes a little bit longer. But if this, if most of this is already populated, you only just have to go through it and it doesn't take much time. And as you get better at it, it'll take less time. But if you wait and do it during the meeting, it, your meeting's going to be two or three hours long. Okay, so let's talk about tier three now. I made this as simple as possible because we really don't have tier three implemented, but we do have students that have behavior intervention plans. So that's why it needs to be on. Plus, it needs to be on here because TFI 3.16 requires it. So let's talk about um, that. Okay, so you're just pro you're just progress monitoring students. Um, you're only going to spend about 10 minutes in this item max. All columns should be pre-populated by the counselor or psychologist. And for CUB sites, whoever has access to CUB students' information. Um, this team should not get in the weeds on each of these students until Tier 3 is fully implemented. Just monitoring these students will help you with your TFI score and improve the student's school performance. The team should just look at students who are struggling. Notes can be added during the meeting if necessary. Note, unless you're a Cub school, this list should reflect no more than 5% of your student body. Students are unlikely to be removed from this list. Um, but if they are, then they are. Um, best practice, to add more rows to any section, highlight the last row. This just tells you how to copy rows, which we've already talked about before. Okay, so let's see what it looks like in your form. Okay, so student progress monitoring. Note, for schools who have CUBS programs, you will monitor all CUBS students, but only students from your school originally will count in your Tier 3 count for the TFI. So on the TFI, when it asks you if you have 1%, of your population in tier three, you only count the students who are in Cubs from your school. So if they came over, say from Nancy Corey or another school that does not have a Cubs program, you are gonna monitor those students, but you are not gonna count them for your TFI. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we have this student here. Okay, he is currently placed in special education of some sort. He's got an IEP. He may be in regular ed with an IEP or he may be in like a special day class. Um, and then you have Billy O and he's going to be general ed. Okay. And maybe you have a lot of Sam's in this school. Sam G, he is in cups. Okay. How, progress. Are they meeting their goals? Are they making progress? Struggling to make goals indicate in the notes when their individual team is meeting again to discuss further intervention. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to be there. You just need to indicate when their individual team is meeting again. Because if they're struggling to make their goals, their team should be meeting more frequently. That's in the TFI. Okay, so how often does a student's individual team meet? Weekly, every two weeks, or monthly? It should not be any more than monthly, but at some schools, it's like every six weeks. So other indicate frequency in the notes column. So here in the notes column, you would indicate when they are meeting. Um, but for any students that have behavior intervention plan, they should be met on at least monthly. I left this space blank here because it looked awkward without it. And so just leave that there. It's not a big deal. Okay, so ending your meeting. Item 14 on the agenda is read because this is where you stop your meeting. Allow up to five minutes for this item. Agenda items for the next meeting can be added as they come up through the rest of the meeting. So you're doing, you're talking about something and somebody goes, oh, we need to talk about this at the next meeting. Just quickly add it there and then go back to what you were doing. Um, the evaluation section should take the most time. Any items that are so, so, or no, should have a short sentence about how to improve things for next time. The next meeting date, time, and location can be pre-populated or done at this time. So your meeting should already be pre-planned and scheduled, so it should be easy to add that. Anyway, so yes, yes. Oh, this one was so-so. So we did a good job of completing agreed-upon tasks. Um, in the future, we will stay on task. There you go and then desired effects, okay? The date, the time, and location for the next meeting. And that's it, you're done. 
that is your whole entire meeting. So next we're going to do the data analyst form.